Five brutes have brutally raped a white woman in Central Park. It didn't matter that there was no evidence. It didn't matter that the DNA was not linked to anyone who they saw as a suspect. There was a lot of confusion at that time because you kind of knew that those boys were innocent. We all knew it was false, but we were the ones that went to prison for those crimes. I'm Yusuf Salam, and I'm one of the Exonerated Five. My name is E.B. Zaboy, and I am the co-author of Punching the Air. Punching the Air is a book based on my life story, the journey that we as young men of color had gone through in America since we came to these shores, slavery continuing by another name. In 1989, I was one of the five young men known as the Central Park Five. We were railroaded by a system that saw the color of our skin as opposed to the facts of the case. And oftentimes, that's what these stories are about. That case left an indelible mark on me because it framed how I viewed other black boys in my neighborhood, in my community, and in my classroom. And it took a long time for me to understand what the criminal justice system is and the historical relevance of injustice and seeing black children as criminal. It wasn't until 13 years later that the truth actually came out because the system got it wrong. And it continues oftentimes to stand on the side of wrong. Evie and I reconnected with each other years after we were in Hunter College together. When he told me that he wanted to work more closely with young people, we decided that we should tell his story. Punching the Air is the story of 16-year-old Amal Shaheed, who is an artist and poet. After one heated moment, one fateful night, he is accused of a violent crime and sent to prison. From there, we learn how he ends up coping, how he uses his art to find his voice and to just deal with what's happening on the inside. You know, it's the exploration of the two Americas, separate and unequal. We wanted to explore that a bit in Omal's character, because like me, he now is a young man fighting the system, becoming unfortunately awakened to what I call the American nightmare. I am ink, he is paper. I am pencil, he is notebook. I am text, he is screen. I am paint, he is canvas. I am man, he is boy. I am criminal, he is victim. I am alive, he is almost dead. I am black, he is white. One of the things that I wanted to bring into this story in a very real way was the connection that family has to these individuals. Oftentimes you may see a person going through a trial and don't realize that they are a part of community. They are a part of family. I didn't go through prison myself. My family was there, my brother, my sister, my aunts and uncles. My mother was there all the time. And oftentimes she went through a worse prison than I went through. I am a mother of teens, I am a mother of a black boy. So I understand the vulnerability of children when they make the wrong choice. This is not necessarily a story about a crime and it's not necessarily just about race. It is about a boy contending with himself and finding hope and healing through his art. You know, when I was in prison, one of the things that really helped me was art. It was that medium that I had always loved that allowed me to really become a master of art and get lost in the page. You know, with Amal, I wanted him to also speak to what we're experiencing in this country, that the arts have been taken out of schools. His artistic expression is not given the value that it's needed. When children are told that they're worthless, they begin to think that they were born a mistake. While black people are only about 13% of the U.S. population, black men are 34% of incarcerated individuals in the United States, and that's a huge disparity. We explore the school of prison pipeline in the book, and it's one of those things where you start saying to yourself, how is that possible? But then you realize through the data that they actually plan how many prisons to build based on the fourth grade. And so if the test scores in the fourth grade is a precursor as to how many prisons need to be built, that's a scary space to be in, but that is an actual fact. There was no in-between time to say goodbye. I went from kid to criminal to felon, to prisoner 
to inmate. We're moved from the county jail and onto a bus. And from the bus, we're going to the juvenile detention facility. There are two guards on the bus, one in front, one in the back. And this almost feels like a field trip, almost. Except the quiet is choking my ears. The absence of voices is like cold hands wrapping their icy fingers around sound. And maybe there was never this much room on slave ships. The thing about Amal that we wanted to bring out and expose is how he is aware. He's able to give speech and idea and thought to these things that are showing up in the world today, that black is seen as ugly, whereas white is seen as good. He had this awful experience, but he had been having awful experiences, one on top of the other, that were constantly trying to tell him to keep in a box. But one of the biggest things that I want young readers to know beyond a shadow of a doubt is that they matter, is that we need you. We need you to step up to the plate. We need you to participate. We need you to realize your greatness. You are the hope of the future. And once you realize that the future is brighter, the future becomes alive and well. One of the greatest feelings of being able to share my story through this character, Amal, it's like a brilliant way to be a gift that keeps on giving, to be able to add to the struggle in a manner that isn't my story, but is the story of others, that gives life to their stories, that gives value to their stories. But also, I think one of the best things about this story is that on the front cover of this book is a teenager, a young person, a child. But then you hear that it's being told through the mind and eyes and the heart of a person who actually survived this tragedy to lift up and to pull up and to pull through others who may be going through a struggle and to give them hope. <laughs>